So kind of go through the life cycle of, um, you know, go through the life cycle of an employee's journey. So are we attracting a diverse set of, you know, are we attracting a diverse set of candidates just to get in the, uh, to get in the top of the funnel? Um, so we monitor what we're, um, what we're doing there, you know, look for partnerships, whether it with, um, you know, more senior levels with head headhunting firms that really um, specialize in diverse hiring. Um, look, you know, like I mentioned, way up earlier, like partnering with those kinds of organizations, like way up, to be able to make sure our message when we're proactively going out is going out to a to a diverse group of um, of candidates. <clears throat> then it's once they're getting in the door, um, you know, the retention and the advancement. So we'll focus on what are people. You know, we obviously focus on equity of, across the HR processes, across pay, across promotion, across development, um, and lean in where we find that there are, you know, where we feel that there are gaps. You know, so we, um, you know, we set up, for example, a Black Business Network uh, last year, which has been hugely impactful in terms of, um, you know, helping one helping um, develop some great leaders through leadership opportunities through that network. Um, raise awareness across the company of, you know, at here, me with my white skin. I mean, I don't have that same experience of my colleague who's black, and but I want to understand. And so, you know, having opportunities for those, um, those kinds of conversations. So there's like the HR stuff, as well as the culture stuff that we think, you know, how can we, um, uh, how can we uh, advance, you know, how can we retain and advance people? And then do, how do they feel the environment from an inclusion perspective? How do they, do they feel included? Do they feel they can bring their whole self to the office? It all kind of comes together as part of the strategy. I'm just curious, how would you react to the following statement? Diversity and inclusion has never been more polarizing than it is today. I think that's really crappy. Um, I think that uh, as a company, um, the companies generally today are expected to take a stand. Now, you know, we're not like Global Atlantic is not out there with, you know, particular political positions, mm -hmm. but where there are values that you hold dear, you know, our view of right and wrong, like we ha I think you have to be, um, you know, have to stand by that and not apologize for that. And so that does mean that we are, you know, we have a women's network, we have a black business network, we have an Asian business network because we wanna make sure we provide, it, provide opportunities and investments in our populations that aren't, <clears throat> you know, aren't represented enough throughout the company or at our senior leadership. I think there's not a, um, diversity and inclusion should not feel like a, a zero sum game. I mean, the other, the other component to it too um, and you know, this again is is one of our reflects one of our values is that if I have ten of the exact same people sitting around the table, like same lived experiences, you know, same similar identity, like why why are you paying for those ten identical people? What you really want is someone who has a very diverse set of experiences. Like mm. all of our clients these days deserve you know uh, deserve that. And so I think that. Um, I do feel, you know, versus versus in prior years, um, I feel like companies have gotten past the point of playing lip service and really are committed to making change. Some of it, some of it voluntarily, and some have been great leaders in it. Others, you know, we're certainly trying to be. Um, <clears throat> others maybe have been, you know, only because California has put in a rule or the Nasdaq has put in a rule. Yeah. You know, they're doing that, but you add all that stuff together you end up with a much more diverse group of, um, of business leaders. And then like we stop talking about it because it's perfectly normal to have, you know, men and women and you know, different genders, different races and ethnicities, different lived experiences, different sexual orientation, every aspect of diversity. Like um, I really am looking forward to the day where that becomes the norm. And that isn't something that we have to work towards because it's just like, it's just how it happens now.